This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias of all kinds here in the Sorgatron Media Studios from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by way of Western New York. Had a couple days out with some uh, uh, extended family, I guess we can say. Had some early Thanksgiving. So glad to get in it. It is Turkey Week, and we have a gathering of the awesome family here this week. First of all, uh, where do we go? Let's go uh, relatively alphabetical. Uh, from Studio C in the Big D of Dormont, PA, back on the show. God, it's been like a month or something. The Chilla is back with us. I am back, and it's, it's a lot cooler here than where I was last week. I was in Phoenix. You were in Phoenix? My God. It was 75 degrees. My father-in-law got stuck in Phoenix overnight because of uh, plane issues last week. So, um, yeah, we've all been, most of us have enjoyed some, uh, some, some higher, some nice areas lately. So uh, that's been appreciated. So good to have you back. Also back with us from Studio Duds is the Dudders. Katie is back with us. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Katie. Katie, if you're with video, Katie's got something on her face, and we'll address it later in the show. Actually, as we get to our awesome things of or things of the year, or thankful thankfuls mm-hmm. of the year, or something like that. Don't mind me. I'm trying to figure out where this HDMI goes as we're going to. So, and also with <laughs> not important, <laughs> Katie. How are you doing other than the obvious? Fantastic. That's, that we're keeping <laughs> yeah. a mystery for the audio people. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm doing well. I got a thingy. I got a bandagey thing on my nose. It's mm-hmm. very lovely. It it's it's been an interesting week. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Since like Thursday or something, right? So, uh, either way, you're healing up, and we'll talk about that here later in the show after the break. Also with us representing the iPhoneography podcast and Astro. I keep wanting to say astrobiology whenever I put the tweet out <laughs> for you <laughs> when we put the clip up. Uh, astrophotography <laughs> is what I mean to say. Dave Potter is with us as well. Hey, Sork. You're doing good today. I, and luckily having a lot less exciting week than Katie. Hey, there you go. There you go. Anyways, uh, let's get into our... This is the podcast. That one. Thing of the week. Awesome thing of the week. There you go. Uh, let's get started with... Um, Chilla, what do you got going on? So I actually had the Gen 1 of these, and I actually am thinking about ordering a second one. Um, mine is the Lit Me Fantasy 3 TV backlight kit. Um, what I like about this um, is it's not a lot of the lighting kits. If you see them from Govi or other companies, mm-hmm. um, they actually have a camera that hangs out over the front of the TV mm-hmm. and looks down at the TV and then it projects it and the border colors around the back. So it makes it look like any show you're watching the colors around the edges are bleeding off the side of the TV because it's LED lighting around the back of the TV that's then projected kind of against the wall. Um, <clears throat> what I like about theirs is it's an HDMI box, um, and it's like half the price of what the Philips Hue systems are uh, of, of the same type. The other thing I like about theirs is they actually, to help you save some cash, <clears throat> they have different kits for different size TVs. So there's a 55 to 60 inch TV, 65 to 70, 85 to 90, and then 86 to 120. Um, It's very easy to put on the back of your TV. Um, They walk you through it. And then there's this HDMI pass-through box. Um, I've had issues with speaker bars and all kinds of older equipment, not working with 4K TVs or, you know, not working correctly with surround sound. Um, their box I've never had an issue with, and it always looks really good when, whether you're playing a game or watching a movie, 
Um, I also don't like having a lot of light on the room because you often get a reflection on the on the glass panel. Yeah. Um, so this offers a nice black or um, back lighting to your television. Mm. Um, and the coolest thing right now is if you're a 55 to 60 inch TV owner, these are typically about 200 bucks, but they're 50 percent off right now on Amazon. Mm. So um, nice. highly recommend it. Like I said, I have. I have two of these. I've been thinking about getting a third. Um, and I'm really thinking about it because, wow, half off. It's pretty pretty good deal. For... It's like getting two. Yep. <clears throat> and like I said, I've had really good experiences with, with this Let Me company. They, they sell other devices like where if you wanted to do other LED lighting, maybe around a table or under your sofa, um, all the li- lights can sync together, mm-hmm. um, and it works pretty well. I like it. I like it. Um, very cool. I-, I have not had the opportunity to watch a lot of like ambient, like like uh, uh, it. So you, it really does kind of enhance the, that vibe, I guess. It's it's just, yeah. Think about like Star Wars or anything, right? Any of the colors that are gonna mm-hmm. be around the edge of the TV are just gonna gonna bleed off. It's not like it's throwing the image there, but no. It, it, to me, it gives a nice effect. Mm-hmm. Like I have down lighting in my basement and then I have upstairs, I have like uh, floor lamps for the most part, which cause a lot of reflection off the glass. Mm-hmm. This lets me dim them to the point where it's non, not noticeable. And then there's still enough ambient light if you want to get up and move around. Also, awesome. not like everything's totally dark. So that is the Lit Me Fantasy 3 TV backlight kit uh, over on Amazon. That's L-Y-T-M-I if you're looking for that later. So. And, it, and it supports up to 8K, 60 hertz, HDMI 2.1, compatible with Alexa, Google Assistant. I presume this is down compatible if I still have a, uh, HD televisions. <laughs> so oh, yeah. It's just picking up the light. <clears throat> as long as you can. And the interesting thing, like the original box is you got one pass through. Mm-hmm. Um they now have a switcher on this that supports up to, I think, four so you, HDMI inputs. So you have like 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 a built-in like TV switcher on top of things. Like it kind of passes through the entire thing, right? So mm-hmm. that's cool. That's cool. Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? I think it involves you. Me? Also. Oh, no. What did I yeah. do? What did I do? Uh, the not your average holiday parade, you jack off. Oh, boy. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> it's parade time it's so parade favorite... time yeah. um but yeah this is our favorite john our favorite jag john and rachel's media jag off podcast hope um host this it's like a non-parade or a re- reverse parade because uh the story is wpxi got rid of their holiday parade so they took over in the parking lot of uh the block Northway, and they have different stations set up and they drive around and Sorg does get to live stream this. So you can watch it online and watch it later on, but they have a lot of fun guests. It's always folks on the radio. I, I didn't even see all the guests this year. Um, Cause I, I end up running around telling people what's next or where to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, did you know kid mental is going to be there? I, I saw the post about that. Our good friend kid mental. I ran out to him. Mm-hmm. I, I was a uh, uh, random. They had uh they had a Christmas thing a uh, couple like last weekend or uh, we over at uh Oh, the waterfront and we're walking through to, to go see a movie and and we're back and they're tearing down and i'm just like who's that guy on the stage <laughs> 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 it, it, apparently it was a zero fossil production so uh we got to catch with them for a moment there but no this is a this is a fun thing yeah and it, it, it's it's so it's so wild it's so fun um this is the one from is it this last year's i think it's, yeah i think it's the first year we did it here uh yeah because that was like the graphics <laughs> yeah. i did for that um, but no, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's the Yo- Yo- jag off polka per- band. Uh, you get to sit home and uh, kind of just uh, check it out. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's uh, so it's the block at North Block Northway. Mm-hmm. Uh, starts Saturday at 10 a.m. The biggest thing at the end is Santa's going to be there. That's right. And it's the Pittsburgh Santa. So it, that's the best part is it's the Pittsburgh Santa, and he is did, amazing, and he does this every year, and he's very kind. Did I see Santa doing like some kind of karaoke or something on social media with them, or they, they didn't? They were dancing <laughs> somewhere on stage, like they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, like I presume it was light yeah. up night or something, right? I think it was. Yeah, so I was trying to see. I was like, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. 
I haven't and then something at, else. Oh, okay. I haven't looked at the forecast for this one yet. <laughs> uh, it's going to be cold. It, it looks clear, yeah. but just it's going to be cold. As long which... as it's dry, because that was miserable yeah. that first time. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so I actually I, I talked to Rob, our videographer that did the first time having him coming back, and he's just like, "Yeah, it was it was kind of just miserable and cold the entire time." I was like, well, "At least you were moving." <laughs> mostly <laughs> so not as much as katie was uh so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big it's not a big parking lot i think i did like a thousand miles just <laughs> yeah I, you, I mean you're just like the pa organizer like hang hanging that you know just you're holding the whole thing together does the truck move He's should trying. it not move did do we need to pull up more you know we're oh uh, by the way the driver's wearing a headset this year we're we're i've already decided that's a thing that's happening uh so <laughs> Uh, for better or for worse, that's what's going to happen. So, no, it, it's a really good experiment and, and something that's really cool to pull off here and, and, and uh, kind of problem solve and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, look look for that. I'll be streaming. I think we'll be on Trib Live again this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, you can go I there. Believe. And check out. So, um, yeah, awesome. Go check that out. Uh, was there a secondary thing you said? Yeah. Okay. Something else they're doing is they have uh, Kaufman's, essentially like kind of Kaufman's windows. They're five foot by four foot boxes. Uh, the Carpenter Union built. So four nonprofits uh, created their own little um, little windows for the holiday season. And they will have QR codes on them. And 4125 is one of those nonprofits. So come check out your window while you're there. It is a nice. big unveiling on that Saturday, too, after the parade's over. So everybody can see it. Yay! Nice hat, partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there you are. There you go. Representing. What? Oh, oh, oh. With the 412 Thrive hat. There you go. Yay! There we yeah. go. <laughs> awesome. Now, it's going to be a fun time and, uh, you know, a good part of the uh, holiday weekend. Uh, so trying to get Christmassy in a little earlier. <laughs> yes. Um, and we might have some fun festivities at the studio. I, you know, I, we're working on it. We're seeing, I th- actually, I think everybody's available that we talk to. So we might have some fun there too. Um, I have some social media for that. Anyways. Um, who's next Potter. Since yes. you got a hat, I don't know. Maybe your awesome thing is that hat. I don't know. Well, no, that, that I will say this. It is not the hat, even though the hat is truly awesome right there. Mm-hmm. That is a truly awesome hat. Yes. But no, it's actually related to something I did after work today Um, because I saw the forecast for Thanksgiving around Pittsburgh and it's not supposed to be horrible, but it's supposed to rain. And I don't want to be outside in the rain putting up Christmas lights. Exactly. So tonight I decided to put up my Christmas lights and something I got this year is a new outdoor time remote timer and this one's actually pretty nice because it's got uh six prongs in it on two sides it has a nice stake so it keeps it off the ground and it has a nice remote control so you can actually control it from the warmth and um <laughs> lightness of your home instead of having to go out and try to click something outside so, or if you don't want to do like a, you know, um, like dust till dawn and not have your lights on at three in the morning. So this is the Woods Outdoor Holiday Decor Timer mm-hmm. with Remote. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, that looks handy. Oh, it does. Yeah. And like I said, I like the fact that it does have the remote if you want to turn off your lights for whatever reason or turn them on. That way you don't have to worry about being stuck on the timer mm-hmm. that you don't have control over. So it, 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 it's it, like I said, our old one last year kind of bit the bucket. Mm-hmm. So we were looking for a new one anyway. Um, and like I said, the, the one I the one sometimes you see them, they're, they just kind of lay flat. And this one is up and it's protected with the plugs that you don't use. Mm-hmm. So I, I do like that fact. It makes it a little bit safer. I like it. Um, and I'm sure there's, a, there's probably a few versions of this, but this looks like a really nice one. Yeah. Yeah, and it it, it was nice because we were just in Sam's Club doing our normal shopping. And it's like, oh, we need this. And this is not a bad price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 16, what was that? 1690 something over there on Sam's Club.com. 1698. Mm -hmm. So go check that out. All right. My awesome thing of the week is something that's coming up here. Uh, I just saw the answer. Remember Super Bowl last year? 
Katie, I think you might have been here for this, where uh, we watched yes. the Nickelodeon version, the SpongeBob, the uh, Super Bowl in, in Bikini Bottom, I think it was, right? Um, oh, yeah, it was amazing. So, so of course, there's been some shuffling, and you have ESPN and Disney, uh, and, and, I, and I presume ESPN also has NBA as well. So there's two things actually popping up here. What did I just open? Um, and he's, he's both popped up on my feed on, on Instagram. So this is kind of all I've seen of it, uh, so far, but I'm sure there's a lot more out there. So of course you have the NFL, uh, this is going to be, I believe a Monday night game on December 9th. And if we go over here, you're going to see that they're going to do an NFL game with the Simpsons in an alt telecast Whoa. and they have a preview for what it's going to be. This is going to be the Dallas Cowboys against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, where Homer and Bart are going to be representing uh, each team, respectively. And uh, it's going to have uh, interviews. I think they, they said that, uh, hold on, let me get this swung over here. And this is the little video preview they have for it uh, to kind of visualize what's going on. I think what they're doing is they are actually going to do, because I've seen them do this with the kind of like the Madden game, game, Madden gameplay and things like that, is what I'm, what I'm rocking off of this is, they're going to reenact the entire game in the CG kind of goofy um, player kind of uh, uh, look to everything in the Springfield kind of stadium. Like there's like a POV thing that they did. Um, I, again, I don't know how that's going to play into the live thing. Um, you're going to have s supposedly um, sideline interviews by Marge and Lisa. Uh, you're going to have Maggie on the, um, what they say, the, the flyover cam or some the sky cam. Yeah, Maggie's going to operate the sky cam. So you get the general idea there. Um, so I love this. Uh, this is uh Disney. It's going to be do, 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 do on both Disney plus and ESPN on SPN plus and with mo mobile availability on NFL plus. So all the pluses have it. They're calling it fun day football. And, and not only this, I also discovered that they're doing something with the NWA or NWA. Sorry. I was just watching wrestling, uh, NBA <laughs> as well. This is going to be, I believe on Christmas day, it's going to be the next Spurs game. And it's going to be, uh, again, they're calling this using uh, Sony's Beyond Sports Technology, and they're going to have an animated NBA game with uh, Mickey and Friends as part of it. We don't have as much. We just have just kind of some uh, some stills of it so far. Uh, Christmas Day at noon is where they're going to be doing this. Uh, so they're going to be launching that all cast as well. Again, it's going to be a, D a Disney and an ESPN product as well. I cannot tell you the last time I watched a basketball game, but I'm kind of up for this. Eat your heart out, Space Jam. <laughs> so um i don't know what do you guys think of this you know based on what we saw with the nickelodeon kind of playing with these concepts and 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 going in, like uh, katie i know we, we were watching the nickelodeon ones are, are you excited for a, a simpsons version of a football game yes i think it's gonna be fun i don't know i like i like the simpsons and grow, we girl grew up on the simpsons i love the simpsons <laughs> yes i'm excited <laughs> awesome what about you chilla i'm not i'm actually not familiar with the whole the whole thing so what is it so it, it looks like you're going to be it's an alternate version of the telecast now now it seemed like nickelodeon seemed to so, overlay things on top of the game and like you know like 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 slime coming out of the end zone and stuff like that right and had different alternate alternative uh commentators this is going to be sounds like it's going to be a more integrated um where like you're going to see the game kind of generated in cg based on where the players are and how the plays play out Okay, so I've seen the slime thing, but I'm interested. Like, are they going to overlay that with the no players I, to scale? My to to what I think is going to happen, if I'm understanding this right, is the they will replace. You won't watch live action. You're going to watch live action retold through CG in the style okay. of The Simpsons. <clears throat> and I think the I think the the, the basketball game is going to be very similar. I'm interested to watch it because. I don't like the slime time no. or whatever they call it. Ah. I, I honestly don't. So I'll, I'll give it a whirl, mm -hmm. but we'll see what it's like. And also, I mean, it's not so much maybe. Well, okay. Simpsons is going to be for us. Let's be honest about this. But see, like, I like, I like the Simpsons concept, but yeah. I'm interested. Is it going to look comic -y or is it going to look like it's going to look CG? It, like this is basically a video preview of what they're expecting. Things are going to look like that. We were showing here shortly. So like it's it this is this is the this is the preview. This is the trailer. This is what you know they're setting you up to kind of expect. And you notice they're they're going in and going 
into like what it's going to look like with the players on field and things here momentarily. See, I wish it would be more flat and like normal Simpsons esque. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> give me like, give me like yeah. the ten yard fight Some tech mobile cell shaded uh, <laughs> version of the game with the Simpsons. You know, uh, we can we can sell that for next year, I guess. I don't even know what who would have to get the rights to it in order to do that version of it, right? So, like, if only G four was still around and actually successful, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we get something like that. So, uh, look for that. Hey, it's gonna get me interested in checking out some sports ball again that I haven't in a good long time, right? So, there you go. Uh, that's been our awesome, it's the awesome thing of the week. And thank you to our awesome people supporting the show over at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Uh, our friends that support us over there, including Cynthia Klosky, Michael Fedor, John Nagore, and Dave Potter. Hey, um, he supports everything. It's a, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I think you're on both Patreons, aren't you? I kind of, I am, yes. it's a blank yep. slate after I say it so I can say the next one after this one. <laughs> so, um, but no, thank you everybody that does support us. We do get a little bit of extra Patreon. We are uh, we a little bit of the pre-show. You get on there. You get yeah, you know, before the graphics come down, you you see what's going on, and you get the first look at the Patreon content here live on Tuesday nights with us as, with an alternate alternative stream. Kind of like it's like this. It's like the systems of NFL, but the opposite. Um, so. <laughs> thank you everybody that does support the show and keep things rolling here at the Awesome Cast and give us a reason to come back every week. Uh, so let's get into our, I don't have a sounder for this. I, I should just get a gobble gobble, uh, thing going. Oh, no, I'll, I'll work on one in a second. Um, I like to do a version of, uh, our awesome thing of the week every, every year for this, um, episode of kind of like more of what are we thankful for in tech and geekery or whatever the case may be. Um, so Katie, we teased it. So let's start with your <laughs> thankful and, and now we, and I'm sure it's something we're not going to be able to live up to. Now I realize that I put you first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Katie, what, what are you thankful for this year in awesomeness? For me in awesomeness in tech, um, personally, uh, on my nose, I did have a basal cell, um, carcinoma that I had to have renewed, moved from the side of my nose. It was kind of right along the ledge here. I thought it was a pimple that just took a while to heal and it turned out it was not. And, um, it's got this whole process happened very quickly and I needed, uh, I ended up having to do, they kind of do a couple scrapes and then, so they get everything out, got everything removed, need a little bit more reconstruction because of the location. And that's why I'm wearing this and I have stitches under here that come out tomorrow morning. Very excited about that. So it's mm -hmm. been a long week. Just but in time for the holiday. The cool th oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> For the parade. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, it, it's been a lot. Yeah. So I had a much bigger thing on my nose for two Penguin games and had to hide it because I didn't want people to worry about me. But the thankful thing about the way I lucked out in this whole process was um, I thought it was weird that it hadn't healed. I was able to take a photo with my phone and send it through the My UPMC app, which is mm -hmm. my the system I use. Uh, to my dermatologist and she looked at it and said, yeah, we need to get you in here as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. And that started the process. I was in within the next two days, I think it was, and saw her, she took a, a sample from it. And then within when we had the results um, in the app, she literally called me as she got the results and she's like, yep, we need to get you in and take care of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't go anywhere else which is pretty awesome and very grateful that we have good tech between mm -hmm. my phones and being able to send just send it to somebody without having to be able to get in for an appointment yeah because how many people are like you know because you were telling me that i'm just like god i have so many molds and pimples that that sounds disgusting uh but <laughs> you know I, mean, I don't even think about right um, but yeah, having that availability, like, you know, we kind of talked about how people don't get their hearing checked around the whole, uh, AirPods thing, you know, coming out. Some of our people will be able to kind of maybe move forward in that kind of thing, lowering that barrier of entry, especially something. So, so many people just don't even think about that. Could be walking around mm -mm. with that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, yeah, you don't give it a second thought. Um, I mean, that would be incredible if we got to a point with cell phones that mm -hmm. we could just like the same as our hearing test, like, oh, let me just, let me scan this funny looking mole. And it's like, mm, <laughs> oh, yay, it's, it looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a normal weird looking mole. But um, yeah, I think it's, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative and I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Lowering that barrier. I, we see that with mental health too, don't we? Because we do see like tel yeah. the, the tele, the Zoom, Zoom uh, 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 therapists and things like that, right? And, and I know like mm -hmm. 
you know, uh, it is another conversation whether the apps are any good or anything like that with some of the some of our behavioral therapy friends. Um, but still, like, if it, even if it gets you thinking about things that you weren't before, you know, like it gets you, you know, that's such a hard, that's just such a big hurdle to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get into the doctor and take care of this. I'm going to talk to somebody about this, you know, and if it, you know, just makes that easier from, you know, your own home or whenever, you know, that just yeah, so much more is going to get taken care of. So mm -hmm. I, like I am very much one of those people who ma hates making phone calls. If anything I can do over text or message or email before <laughs> yes. a phone call, I will do it. I've been stressing over a phone call I had to make over some, some, uh, uh, business stuff for the last week. <laughs> and I was like, today I'm doing it. Damn it. <laughs> but <laughs> Awesome. Uh, no, I'm glad you got that taken care of. I'm glad that you're healing up and things look good. Do you need to get checked on that? Um, like a kind of a follow up to make sure everything's good or, or it's kind of like, mm -hmm. nope, we got it or anything like that. Or I, I, you missed the cat drop. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> before I switched. Um, my boss just stepped out for a moment. Um, she's leaving. Uh, <laughs> I did see that. We see that. There's a little bit of attitude going on there. <laughs> Very much. Why am I making so much noise? Uh, but yeah, so that's it. As far as this particular instance goes, good, it's good, done. It's good. gone. We just got to make sure everything heals up well. Good. And um, we'll have a follow up to make sure everything looks good. And that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear that. So um, definitely, if you have those abilities, use them. Find out if you do have those abilities. I mean, some people probably have them on their insurance plans and don't even know it, right? Like, I don't know, is, is UPMC pretty good about saying, hey, use this, this and this, right? Yeah, they they love you to use virtual stuff. I okay. mean, across the board, they're like, if they, if you can do a virtual visit versus mm -hmm. in an office, they're like, yep, do it. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Who who's next? Who wants to talk about what they're? Who wants to follow that up? <laughs> Potter, Chilla. I'll go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yep. Mine mine is not nearly as great. Um, Listen, so we're, we're, all, we're all batting from beneath right now. So. <laughs> yeah. But for, so I've been traveling a lot. And one of the things that I typically don't like is the keyboard on my tablet. Like the, and I have a, I have a two in one windows device for work. The keyboard on my iPad is okay. Um, <clears throat> so I actually gave the keys to go a try from Logi. Mm -hmm. I love this thing. Um, super light connects up to three devices. I can actually, I've, I've been on planes typing on my phone. Um, works extremely well. It actually, when it's closed, it is in like power save mode. It's off. Um, it actually takes two watch batteries, which mm -hmm. kind of surprised me. Wow. It's kind of odd. It's not like a rechargeable device. Um, they are replaceable. There's two little screws. Um, there is an, actually an on-off switch as well. Um, but super, super nice device. Super thin. Um, and you just kind of flip it over. And you, it kind of gives it a little bit of a tilt. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not bouncy. The key, the key travels okay. Um, it has both Windows and Mac keys on it. Um, makes travel a lot nicer for me. Can you, hold up, can you hold that up again so I can kind of see the yeah, surface? Like, do you want to see the? Which, yeah, I just, I just want to see your yeah, like you for scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those for are, scale. yeah, those are nice size keys. Actually, I kind of like <clears throat> the only thing that I wish I, I wish they made it a little bit bigger and deeper mm -hmm. and gave me full size I, i'm okay yeah. without a number mm. pad i don't yeah. need a number pad but bigger arrows would be Skip the only thing arrows, i would wish yeah. for especially i've tried especially in that, in that environment right like you it's nice mm -hmm. to be able to click around mm -hmm. i've tried like other keyboards with the bigger arrow keys but then they're thicker they're not mm -hmm. they're not travel friendly that's awesome I still can't, no matter what I try, I, you know, with the laptop and everything. I, I, I think it's me. I'm the problem. Uh, <laughs> it cannot get comfortable enough on an airplane to try to get stuff going. So, um, but anyways, uh, Potter, what are you thankful for? Well, I'm my thing. I'm actually going to steal what you have in the um, in your main one. OK, your main one. OK, that's why uh, I, I, that's why I put a secondary in. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm thankful for, and I'll just say options mm -hmm. in social media. Mm -hmm. Um, that now admittedly it sometimes, I think a lot of times it's good to have a central location where if something happens, you can, you know, you have the widest cross section of people available, mm -hmm. But sometimes things happen to platforms mm -hmm. and it's good to have alternative platforms um, that may have, let's say, better blocking mechanisms mm -hmm. uh, to fall back on and just having options. And I, I know there's always a shakeout when, you know, changes happen and where people are moving to. And, you know, some people may move here. Some people may move here. Of course, there's winners and losers all the time. Uh, but just having that options of the place I used to go to is not where I want to be anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I went through, I, so my version of this, and, and oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into my secondary awesome thing, but I'll, I'll pick it back off yours for this. Um, you know, the social media, it, I, I, I stated it in, in the document as the social media upheaval I've been waiting for. Because <laughs> we've been, yeah, I think I, I pined on this show about how we've been kind of stuck with the same ones, like these, these, um, you know, these pillars, these, you know, nobody can beat them. Um, um, social media platforms between all the meta stuff, the Twitter, um, and God, who else was there? Uh, you know, um, and YouTube, right? So, so, and we're, you know, we all we saw the promise of like, oh, there's this blue sky, oh, there's this Mastodon thing, oh, Meta has threads, at least that's something different, you know. Um, but you'll still get the same and feels more or less like a Twitter, right? Because that's what some of us want. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, for, for better or worse, agree with the reasons or not. This has happened, you know, um, somebody has bought Twitter, turned it into its own personal playground, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, that's what he's done, you know, unequivocally. And, uh, and, and, you know, or even if, even if you can just look at it and say, I don't want all these extra features. I don't want to be a bug to pay for this thing. I want to go over here. And the promise of, oh, threads is the same thing, but at least it's like into my, you know, every, all three of those other platforms are promising and open source. Right, uh, Fediverse, you know, kind of, you know, decentralized kind of thing. There was an article about how, you know, no, actually, no, that, that I misread that. <laughs> I misinterpreted the article to the end, so I won't get into that. Um, but uh, you know, like they, and finally, those people are going and finding their communities over there. I, I've always said I was not going to make a big move. I was placeholding until I saw the wrestling community make a move. That mm -hmm. was my barometer, and it has happened. It has happened. Big time, right? When I saw when I saw uh, the 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 second largest, biggest pressing promotion start a blue sky, I'm like, and every every credible wrestling journalist move over to blue sky. I'm like, oh, it is effing on. <laughs> you know, here we go. And I had to break it to our social media manager. You're gonna have to learn how to do these things. And but also, it's exciting like it used to be because there's a newness to it. Everybody's discovering features. Everybody's discovering new ways to use it. Somebody had a little thing where the the two celebrating ladies could be squeezed together so they were closer on the threads. There's a little feature mm -hmm. I didn't know about, you know. Um, and I'm trying to think about other things we can do with that, uh, with with you know marketing and stuff. Um, I would say definitely panoramic. Panoramic? Yeah, because... Oh, the way the photos of, lay out. Doing, yeah. yeah. Instead of doing one panoramic, you can do mm -hmm. photo here, mm -hmm. photo here, photo here. Yeah. You can do yeah. more than two and say, squeeze together to get a full panoramic and you don't yes. have the panoramic like curve to it. I like it. I like it. Like the, again, you know, I, I like that there's those options. I like that everything's mm -hmm. getting thrown up in the air. And I like that there is a potential that the places that may win may not be susceptible to another, uh, uh, you know, Mark or Elon coming in and messing it up is, you know, two out of three options sound pretty good for, for that kind of idea. And it's kind of, uh, uh, uh idiot founder proofed, hopefully, um, you know, in, in these kinds of things, not founder, but purchasers or whatever. So, um, no, I'm with you on that. Now the the, the okay, so my secondary thankful thing because I knew it was going to happen. I was going to go last. Um, definitely thankful for AI as a small business, you know, owner and content creator because it saves so much time. I would love to hire Dave 
for all my podcasts <laughs> to do the work like he does in Fishing Without Bait, right? Um, and he does great work, and he sends images of, of my wife with interesting faces when she's on, the, on an interview. Um, <laughs> but that's just not plausible, right, for a lot of reasons. Um, so, so, you know, to have, you know, the cap cut, you know, uh, video generator to have, you know, uh, things like, you know, chat GPT to help me figure out, okay, can, you know, cause I can't wrap my, I have struggled for years with the, you know, get the right SEO, get the right hashtags, but, you know, that kind of thing and, and have something that kind of pops that out for me or cleans up an email. I was writing an email, you know, asking for money today <laughs> to do a job and, I feel so awkward writing that so I can just be like, make this sound a little bit better, you know? And, you know, it's my secondary copywriter and then I review it and say, yes, that's what I meant. You know, that's the thing in my head that I can't get out. And, and we actually had a comment, um, uh, Dave, you remember a couple of weeks ago, I think we were talking about how you, we were talking about the notes app. Uh, and I have not tried this enough. If you record a phone call with iPhone mm -hmm. in the notes app, yeah. you can, um, um, it, it transcribe it, it make and, it go notes and everything. Yeah. And they're like, well, why don't you just take better notes? And it's just like, I, some of us can't, <laughs> you know, yeah. for one reason or another, you know, but, well, not only that, but you're trying to pay attention to the person on the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many times were we like, Oh, hold on. I got to get a words and pencil at. Uh, I got to find a pay piece of paper. I don't well, have not even that. Just like there. taking the time to write the thing down. Yeah. And did I actually write what that person just told me? Or mm -hmm. did I interpret it? As, or do, did I write what I think they told me? And you find out like three weeks later when you're at the job, that's not how you thought things were happening. You know, like, like it's not just, you know, that it is about fine tuning, grabbing those details. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and again, these are not things to replace things. These are things to enhance what you already do and be better at it. Cause not all of us are incredibly amazing, super detailed person like my wife, you know, <laughs> who's incredible with those kinds of things, but I can't throw all this stuff at her cause she's got plenty to do. So, you know, some of us have to figure it out for ourselves. And thankfully there are tools to help us through if we're smart enough to apply them the right ways. Um, anybody else have anything else about how AI has been helping them this year? I know we've, we've all been working with it in several different ways. <laughs> so. I like how I, um, I've used it. We kind of talked about this before as like an assistance where I will not, I've had to, well, the same thing kind of rewrite things for me. So I, cause I couldn't think of a better way to say certain things. Um, in a correct format mm -hmm. and I've also had to I've used it um, to essentially like kind of streamline some things and yes. like what's what's the best way to do this it's to me it's like an enhanced google without having to google if that makes any sort of sense like where it's like how do I do this what are the steps to down because I, I tasks big scare me brain go <clears throat> Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um having something that will break it down to like this is how you do this and i go oh okay i can do this and this and this but yeah big pfft, scary okay. Okay. that was that was that go goblin tools that did that for you right that was breaking mm -hmm. things down because that's always mm -hmm. that's always like you know one of the big like advice points i always got on the internet was like well you have this giant task okay what's the first step you do today it's like but i can't figure out the first step because all i'm looking at is the giant thing like you need something to say, no, this is your first step and help you narrow that down. You know, sometimes that's a consultant you talk to, you know, and now, you know, this is, this is that kind of thing, you know, so an organization is consultant of some sort. So now it's been fascinating. And again, like it, I think we're finally back to an interesting on technology, exciting, sometimes scary world, uh, of course, with things, um, we're dealing with a lot of, um, um, uh, uh, technology applied to society over the last decade or so free willingly. And what does that mean? And, um, but also there's a lot of tools out there that I think are going to, you know, I'm always looking at like, you know, the new connections that can be made, you know, and there can always, wherever you can make good connections and good things can happen, people can use it for some terrible things too. It's always going to happen. Um, so as long as you don't cut it off for everybody else too. So anyways, well, we got a little bit of time here, and then we got a few things that we can kind of poke at. So let's check out some of the news. Yep, yep, it's the news. What's going on out there that you guys want to talk about out of this uh, last of the list here? Maybe you want to go first? I don't know about Disney and the NBA. We already talked about that. Or not Disney. 
Oh wait, wait. Oh yeah. Dang. Yeah, no. I moved it up <laughs> top. Sorry. That's the one. That's me. right. I was like, I looked at the difference. I, I hit the dunk the halls and thought it was something different. And no, I was super no, excited. That was mm. me. Yep. 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 Uh, but Oh, have you been looking at, I, I've been deep into uh TikTok behind the scenes stuff of Disney recently. Oh yeah. And um, I've been enjoying that like uh, rides within the rides. And mm-hmm. um, also I'm very sad about the Muppets. Um, <gasps> the their whole alley. Oh, the Muppets <laughs> going mm-hmm. away has <laughs> been incredible. Um, I'm I'm really glad we went when I did to see some things that are that we just found out are going away this year. Mm-hmm. I think I talked about that before. Muppets Theater. Muppets Theater. <laughs> no. So uh, to that vein, um, there is an account that I've come across. She is a civil engineer. Mm. And she breaks down Ooh. what went wrong and why Rise of the Resist or, or uh, Star Wars Land, Star Wars Galaxy, ruined the flow of the park. Yeah, I uh, saw that. Yeah, I saw that also. I saw that, that. also. Saw cut, that off, also. cut off yep. Muppets, and now they're yep. uh, trying. They're gonna fix it because there was an arena or not a. There was a theater because it was all the backlot stuff, and that's why. Because mm-hmm. like, we went to the thing where like the one on the one. Um, alley where you just go to the end and we're like oh this is a uh, something with the uh, madame what's her face that makes the clothes for invincibles and we didn't even know it was a photo op we're just like walked in the building looking at the stuff and we're like oh i guess we're taking a photo now uh and we're like what what was this you know and that was like the entrance and and she like redesigns hey you should have made this go into toy story and this goes over here and this mm-hmm. does this and this so bad news muppets area which has been halfway closed since like COVID, anyways um yeah. and apparently everybody hates the mama rosa restaurant back in the back um we <laughs> I lo- the hate for mama rosa's like disney god i disney disney social media is so wild you know it's a culture mm-hmm. in a culture and it's amazing um but yo that that's been a really fun one my other deep dive this last few days, um, I've been getting XCIA stories <laughs> really bad. Um, and I just went down this rabbit. I have like two guys that I'm following now. I don't even know their names because their names usually aren't on the TikToks, but it keeps sending me the same people across several accounts. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, man, but like I'm down with this. I'm loving the stories. I don't know how freaking real they are, but I'm just kind of. And then I like ended up like with like a Marine was telling me how stuff works there. And I'm just like, what is happening? Why am I so interested in the military now? <laughs> so. <laughs> but um but no it's 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 pretty well happy happy post veterans day i guess uh so <laughs> um but anyways where did we get how did we get here on this one <laughs> but muppets muppets, <laughs> no. muppets. But, muppets. so if you didn't hear okay so yeah that muppet area is going away muppet vision's probably going away too although there was somebody they suggested they could keep it along with the new the new builds for monsters land monsters inc land um, but the Aerosmith roller coaster in Hollywood, in Disney Hollywood, is going to convert into a Muppets roller coaster. I am in for it. I am so in for this. So, um, just a bunch of chickens going. Burr, 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 burr. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like I'm just picturing like the song you're gonna get is like different versions of the Muppet show. Like that's mm-hmm. how the like theme song like the whole thing going through you're like oh no you got the chicken version so it's nothing but like bok bok it's like you know how small world's the same song that's how you don't get messed up going from from land to land like it's the Uh same muppet theme in different versions as you go from section to section give me (laughs) give me the muppet dark ride where this happens okay (laughs) so um yeah it that could turn this into a disney podcast really quick here um, let's talk about, there was, what is this? I don't know about this. This one, I don't know about the robot uprising in China. Cause that was from sun UK. And I, I, yeah, the more I, I, I read that article, I was like, I, ne- I don't trust the sun. I don't trust this. Don't trust the sun. <laughs> it's I mean, it's, it's, it's literally <laughs> saying I, I saw something in national inquiry. It was quite interesting. I got beef with the sun. Cause the sun posted something that we did several years ago. That got some uh, wrestling in the area in trouble with the PA Athletic Commission, and it was some of my content. And I was like, "Oh no, what's going on here?" Happy Ooh. New Year, because uh, they posted it during the break, and they got back in. Um, this is several years ago, so I can talk about it a little bit. They got <laughs> back into like the office on like January second or third, and apparently had like a list of emails, photocopy like with images from the articles and stuff. It was like. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> so, um, I'm excited about this. Um, I've been waiting for this because I'm really frustrated when I can only play the games I own on the cloud on my phone um, when they happen to also be in Game Pass <laughs> that I'm paying for. Um, so uh, Xbox is now letting you play a select number. It's like 120 or something. It's a good number. But also some are like multiple versions of the same game. So take that for what it is. But still, um, if you're buying some more recent games, you're going to have some luck in here. I know my WW2K24 is in here, a couple other games that I think I bought more recently, Mortal Kombat 1, for instance. But you will be able to play, um, as long as they're on this list, and this list will be ever-expanding, of course, you can play games you own on the cloud. Now, you, do, you will also still have to pay for Game Pass as part of this to get the access to the streaming. But still, oh, I'm sorry, only 50 games support the feature and you can't stream them on the Xbox console yet. This is only through like the web and app versions of Game Pass, it looks like. So um, I think that's pretty cool. It's a step in the right direction um, and it kind of opens that up. I mean, they're like Xbox is really big on pushing the you don't actually need a console to Xbox. You know, they're really pushing the thing because it is it is starting to become, I think, installed on several uh, Samsung televisions, perhaps, and things like that. So I think that's a really good this is this is the thing I've been waiting for. This is the next step. And and we're there, even though everything's still in beta. But that's OK. You know, I got good Internet and I can do this now. And, um, you know, and I got a nice controller and I can Xbox, you know, so. Um, no, looking forward to that. And I think, and I think PlayStation, they're, the, the PlayStation has like a portable thing that streams. And I think they just updated it. So you don't need to stream from a console too. So both sides are getting, both camps are getting some really good stream options. What's Nintendo doing? <laughs> I guess, I guess they're, they're gearing up for a new console release next year or something, right? This is a question. Chilla, I don't know. should I consider Chilla, getting, come back. oh no, is he gone? Yeah. yeah, he's been yeah, gone. He, he had, yeah. he had then, Katie, out. I'll ask you until he comes back. The chill phone went you, off and he had to go. You are yeah. now you are now the, the resident Switch uh, owner here. Should I get a late model Switch as they get cheaper or wait for the new one? I mean, it depends on what you want to use it for. That's, a, that's our question. That's always what we <laughs> ask, right? What are you planning on using it for? I um, mean, if you're just going to play games like I play games, uh, you're fine with a late model. I mean, if you want something fancier and a fancier screen... Then wait for the new stuff. I mean, my my case has been fully customized with um, stickers from a planner um, that say lifting. I think that's a birthday exclamation point and maybe something with budgeting. I don't know. It's a check mark. <laughs> my yeah, nephew decorated it for your me last business, time I was there. Your business switch? Is that what's happening there? Yes, that's it. It's my biz switch. Your biz switch. Jeez. <laughs> customized. Maybe it's time to get a bunch of them on the cheap and have a land party. Can you land party with those yeah. things? Yeah. Let's okay. go. Let's That's go. It. Yeah. <laughs> stock up. Stock up. Let's have a switch land party like the good old days. Um, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sold on it yet. I got plenty to play. I got plenty to play. I've been, I've been jumping back into our Apple Arcade games, actually. So I'm a lot of fun with those. Um, anyways, anything else we need to touch on here? Um, should we how do we feel about Niantic? I saw you. I put you put that in there. How do we feel about our Pokemon Go data yeah, being is, used for is, mappage? This is more of an advisory, I suppose. So, as you mentioned, Niantic apparently has been using our geospatial a uh, uh, data for an AI model based on Pokemon Go player data. I'm sure, listen. You're going to hear more and more of this. Uh, so it was it, it, it so. It's based on uh, millions of scans taken from smartphones of players of Pokemon Go and other Niantic products. Um, it could allow computers and robots to understand and interact with the world. So it's based on visualizing 3D geometry. Ooh. Build high fidelity 3D maps of the world. Uh, which include both 3D geometry or shape of things and se semantic understanding what stuff in the map is, such as ground, mm. sky, trees, etc. It's one way to do it, I guess. Um, and, you know, they're a data company and they are a Google spin out. So none of this should really be mm. too surprising. Um, they have aims to navigate the world like ChatGPT spits out text, according to this article on The Verge. Um, unsurprising. Definitely feels a little creepy. 
but it's, you know, um, such is the way, unfortunately. And that's why we need a blue sky of Pokemon Go. <laughs> I did like how they, they were talking about the Pokestops were in areas that they specifically needed more data from. And it was like, oh, oh that's interesting. I thought it was a big deal because there were like McDonald's and stuff, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, which makes... they moved around. Uh, okay. All yeah. right. Interesting. <laughs> so wait, is it like, is it mapping? Like were they yeah. visually? Cause they're. Mm-hmm. So I'm... it's using, but you think about, you could have pictures from multiple angles. Okay. Of a building, depending mm-hmm. on where the poke, where you're, where you're catching your Pokemon at. And you can create a 3d map of the area. Kind of like Google, you think about like a 3D Google Streets, Mm -hmm. Street View. But instead of having one camera running around in a car that you pay money for, you have all these photos that you got for free Mm -hmm. as, you know, just as uh, as people are playing the game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Dudders is going, "Uh uh-huh. And yeah. And then it's like, oh, we can make a 3D map of a city and they can actually make it where you can see, well, I want to see pictures from, you know, 2021. Now I want to see pictures from 2023 from the same location. But these are like, like, you're not always using the camera, though. That's what I'm kind of not getting on this one, because I, I, maybe it's just the way I play. Maybe more people do use their camera when it comes to these, because I know there's a thing where it becomes a, a you know, the, the, the background drops out and you just see what's around you, right? The AR, AR, AR mode of this. Is mm-hmm. that what we're talking about here? Is it's taking that data in? You know, it's like, should I shouldn't have been playing this in my bedroom with the camera on? Is it what we're saying? Um, because it turns out that data was taken up. Is this anonymized? You know, I have I have more questions, basically, you know, that they need to answer to dig themselves out of hot water, honestly, about these things. At least tell us you anonymize the things. Lie to me. <laughs> because yeah. that's all we can Because it? it's not like we can do anything about it. No. Isn't Pikmin AR? Did they... God, they did have a, a Pikmin game, didn't they? That was brief. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. and I'm pretty sure they had the Harry Potter game, and I think they had like an NBA game or something like that. Um, I, none of them, I think, took off to the extent that um, Pokemon Go did. But I'm going to go to their website and see what they have running right now because uh, I am <laughs> I am unawares. So, oh yeah, there it is. There in a right flush on the front page, building a large geospatial model to achieve spatial intelligence. Uh huh. Yeah, that seems, <laughs> and it looks like that looks like what it would look like if I was trying to catch a Pokemon in that background there. Okay, right, there you go. Um, so what if? Oh God, what is? <laughs> oh no, what if augmented reality? And I love that the images on the side are like from like a Pokemon Go and <laughs> and stuff from mm-hmm. stuff they're using. I mean, AI model for perceiving the world, visual positioning system. They don't even talk about the games on the front page. That's wild. And now you can go <laughs> into, you have to dig into the menu to find the games, mm-hmm. which are currently Monster Hunter now, Peridot. I feel like we talked about this. And Oh, Pikmin Bloom is still listed here. Pokemon Go and Ingress Prime, which I think is an update. Ingress was the first game that they, they used mm-hmm. that they kind of based the Pokemon off of Harry Potter, I believe was, uh, they also have campfire and wayfarer. I'm curious about these now. That's for later. Maybe that's for Patreon. We'll poke at those a little bit. Who knows? But in the meantime, it is pumpkin time. Technically it was apparently we're post, but we had a pre pump. We had an early pumpkin time. Cause Chilla just poofed out of existence. <laughs> like a Pokemon that ran away. Did he have a little pew thing? Like, like when he when he ran away, I didn't have him on camera. Just, it just disappeared. Like my cat yeah. just walked out. Was mad. Oh, gave attitude. Did he, did he do the like wiggle attitude thing on his way out the door? Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. we just make up the story now. <laughs> Chilla is on the internet as well. He's Chilla on uh, I believe on X and and Chilla five seventy nine most other places. Katie Dude is Katie Dude dot com for all your links to all things Dutters. Oh, I have to add Blue Sky to that. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Dave Podner. Yep. Pretty I'm much Prof Prod everywhere except for uh, TikTok where I'm Prof Prod PGH. Let me know if the tags work. I've been using Croissant and it does the multiple tag thing that's supposed to adapt them. 
except Katie had a hmm. weird name that I that when if it didn't work sometimes when I tag okay. her, I noticed. So uh, I'm curious if you guys are getting the, the the posts on that. I couldn't find Chilla everywhere. I don't think Chilla has adapted to the new social media world, uh, but he's been traveling a lot, so that's okay. Um, I'm at Sorgatron all places possible. Uh, over on the social medias and otherwise. So uh, please uh, reach out and say hi, wherever you might be. Let me know what your what other TikTok trends I need to get into. Um, so um, it, it's, it's definitely changed. It's definitely changed my, my feed on TikTok. That's for damn sure. I don't know if I like it yet, but, you know, I get into it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, Patreon. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll probably talk about something here on uh, the post show. And maybe we'll dig into the Niantic apps because I, I, Niantic, Niantic apps, because uh, I'm kind of curious about it. Let, let me give them more data. Sure, why not? Um, so <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll be back next week for the awesome cast leading up here through at least the week before uh, Christmas here. And we take a little bit of a holiday break. I don't know why I'm telling you this early. I just, you know, need a moment to find the outro. But thank you guys for joining us. You've been our awesome week. Ha- you No, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Ha- This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.